the one that I made for my cat. This one fits me the best and it was made for a cat. It's that time of year again where I show you everything that I've crocheted in the last six months. Yes, I did cut my hair. Well, my sister cut my hair. I was watching uh, the new season of Loki and I saw Sylvie's hair and I'm like, that's what I want. So that's what I did. I'm still getting used to it. I don't really know how to style it. So anywho, six months ago, I did a whole what I crocheted in the last six months and now I'm doing it again. Now in January, I will be doing another video of everything I've crocheted in 2023. And that was going to be more of a, a quick one because I crocheted a lot of things. Whereas this, I'm going to go in a little bit more detail about the stuff what I liked, what I didn't like, what I would have changed, what I would do in the future if I were to make it again, which is, I guess, the same thing of what I would have changed. I'm going to be going in order of the first thing I made to the last thing I made. And we're going to be starting in July. So the part one is everything from January 2023 to June 2023, where this is going to be July to this current month, December. Now, here's the thing. There is one thing that I am not including in this because I have not finished it yet. And what's so funny is that that video was supposed to come out today but I didn't finish it so it's this one here here's a sleeve it's the Christmas one this one will be included in the everything I crochet in 2023 when that comes out but it's over there I was really close but it didn't happen let's get into it this is the first Thing. This is the 55 burgers, 55 fries, 55 tacos, 55 pies. If you watch I Think You Should Leave, which is from, you know, the creative mind of Tim Robinson, then this might be familiar to you. 55 burgers, 55 fries, 55 tacos, 55 pies, 55 cocos. It was uh, a whole thing, and I've been watching that series for years, and then this year it just really popped off, I feel, on TikTok, and everyone got into it. So I'm like, you know what? Now that everybody, you know, watches it, and I can talk to people about it finally, I'm like I'm just gonna make this little tote bag sure I kind of wanted to make a sweater of this but I think I was working on other things at the time and I'm like let's just do this little bag now this is a tapestry bag and you know how much I love tapestry I did it in these colors because it, it it's giving me you know like 1970s fast food think like A&W McDonald's like all that jazz and I feel like the colors I picked really resemble that time also like you know how much I love vintage retro colors and then the inside of course I had to put some burger fabric, which is so funny because I thrifted this burger fabric way back in the day, like in 2020. I thrifted it and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. And then, and then it just happened. This is why I thrift things that I'm like, I'll use it eventually. And then I did use it eventually. Also, what's really cool about this bag and how I made it is that it is reversible. I have like a little hamburger bag. As long as I'm not putting anything spiky or anything wet inside, it's fine. But for the most part, when I use these bags, it's going thrifting, buying yarn or buying fabric at Fabricland. So just a really cute bag. It's the front. It's the back. I really like this one. I give this a 10 out of 10. Also, I'm going to be rating everything. Next up, because the whole Barbie movie came out, I decided to recreate a top that one of my Barbies had when I was uh, a kid. And the only reason I remember that Barbie so vividly is because I got two for my birthday and I was a little upset. I could have had two different Barbie dolls and I had two of the same. Well, it's fine. I remember it and I made this sweater. Now, what's fun about the sweater is I didn't crochet it. I used my knitting machine to make it. This is the second project that I made with it and I haven't made anything since. I think it turned out really cool. There was a few issues that I had and then when I was done I kind of realized that uh, the knitting machine that I have uh, needs some fixes and I didn't think anything of it. Like for instance the the machine when you use it say if you like say tip it upside down not when you use it but like you know if you tip it upside down the needles are not supposed to move and when I do it they all come out. Oh and that's not supposed to happen and it's because there's like a sponge bar in it that I'm supposed to replace but in order to replace it I gotta take each one of those needles out and put them back in and I haven't done that because I don't want to do that I'll do it eventually that's kind of what's been hindering me on making another sweater but I would like to get back into it so hopefully soon I will do it anyways this sweater here super cute I love this I don't know why I haven't worn it the smell's gone away I don't know if you remember but back back when I made it there was a certain smell to this yarn and I couldn't stand it but it seemed to have gone away so I should start wearing it again because it is so cute. It's so cute. Wear it. Wear it. It's adorable. I give this probably an 8 out of 10 because there are a few little issues that you can't technically see. But like right here, there's a problem. And it's because the yarn had fallen off the little loop thing. And then I had to like try to figure out how to put it back. But I think I was doing it backwards. So I was doing it the wrong side. I eventually figured it out. This project only took me like three days to do. Yeah, I got to really start doing that knitting machine again. Also, I did crochet the collar 
collar, the bottom, and the cuffs right on to the sweater. Now there is a way you can do it on the knitting machine, but I wasn't going to learn that. It is what it is. I think it's cute. I need to wear it more. I need to wear it more. Next up, uh, if you remember in the summer, hexagon short sleeve shirts were the thing and I made one. I think this was my third attempt at making it. I think I wore it twice. I don't know. It was kind of hard for me to figure out how to wear it. I didn't put any buttons on it or anything. It just kind of looks like this. It was super simple to do. I think I did a good job on it. I, I don't know. I was just going through a phase, you know, like I want to make something and then it's just like, it's not right for right now. Eventually this, I probably give another eight out of 10. I think it's really good. I even like crocheted the little collar on here. I didn't wear it as much as I thought I was going to wear it. This sweater I was so excited for and I have not worn it once. I'm, I'm, I feel bad. It's this car sweater that I did from the, uh, from the very first car that I ever drove a Chevy Caprice. I think I did a really good job because guess what I put it on the front and I put it on the back like this is such a cool sweater really liked this color also the color that I made it was actually the seat colors of the car of this car what, that I had growing up I had some problems with the collar staying down so I, I still have it attached to that might be one of the reasons why I haven't worn it also I think think I made it like a little too small and not too small that like I can't wear it. It's just I like a certain comfort to my crochet items. I've realized what it is. It is 80 single crochets across is the perfect fit for myself. This was 70. I made it a little bit too small, but it's okay. I think I did a really good job. I just didn't really have a chance to wear it because I don't know. It's like once I make it, I want to wear it kind of right away, but I made this in the summertime so obviously didn't have a chance to wear because it, it was way too hot and then by the time the fall came i got obsessed with crew neck sweaters i am still obsessed with crew neck sweaters that all these crochet pieces that i made i haven't really worn that much and i need to this i give probably a nine out of ten because i think the creativeness i did really well but the fit and the fact that i haven't fixed this collar you know deduct marks i also crocheted this hamburger i don't have it anymore because my friend heather had asked me to make it for her so i had made it for her I no longer have it. And what's really neat about this one is that it's a stackable hamburger. So each piece is made individually and I put a little Velcro on each of the pieces so they can be like swapped around, taken apart, put back together. It was a really cool project and I, I just don't have it anymore because I made it for someone else. Next up, I made this cardigan. This one is actually a thrift flip. So I saw this while I was thrifting. It was a blanket and I loved the colors of it. And at first I'm like, oh, I'll just take a photo of it and then I'll bring it home and then I'll buy the yard and I'll make it for myself like, like a sweater. And then I'm like, Michelle, the amount of time you're gonna have to make every single square, the amount of money you're gonna have to spend on this yard. Also these colors, don't really exist that much and they're very hard to find like these colors you can't find most of them anymore and like Michaels or anything like that except for like maybe the black and maybe the white but these other colors are just like I don't know they just look older and that's why I loved it so I ended up buying it and then I just kind of cut it up stitched it together and made myself a cardigan and I think it turned out really well now the one thing that I do have to say is I made it a little too long I like a cropped sweater and I just uh, I knew it like when I was making it I'm like okay I tried the three squares down I'm like no that's too short it's gonna be too short and then I put the fourth one and I'm like it's way too long should have only went with three and I think where I went wrong is when I was just kind of like testing it out it didn't have the full weight and that's that's something that you have to realize while you're crocheting is that whatever you're making you have to remember that when it's all put together it's gonna be a lot heavier right so if you're just kind of holding up a piece by itself it's gonna like lay a little bit lighter it's not gonna drag down as much but when you put everything together and you wear it then you realize that it does get you know dragged down a lot and I think that that's where I went wrong is that I thought that three wasn't enough when I kind of I don't want to say dry tested it because I just kind of like laid it out I'm like no it's too it's not long enough but then when I put the fourth one on and I put it all together it was too long so that's the only issue I have with this I give it a I give it an eight out of ten everything's pretty much an eight out of ten just because it is a little bit longer and I wish I had made it shorter I could I could take it apart and redo the bottom part only thing is is that all this ribbing that took me hours to put on I'd have to take it all off and I just don't want to do that right now maybe one day but not today next up is this one that I am wearing I was debating oh like maybe I should wear something else I made and then I just I I love this one. This one, I'm going to tell you, my favorite thing I crocheted, I think all year. I think this is my favorite thing I crocheted all year. I love the colors I picked. I love the pattern. I love how it fits. It fits perfectly. It is like the 80 chains across, somewhere around there. Absolutely 
love how this fits and I wear it a lot. This is the most worn piece. I give it a 10 out of 10. I, I feel like that doesn't have to be said, but I said it. Kind of reminds me of like a grandpa sweater. Do you know how much I love a good grandpa sweater? And I would love to make more of these in different colors, but you know me, I try to do something new every month. But anywho, it was a little boring to make. And I know I said that in the video because it's just one stitch. It's one type of stitch and you got to do four panels, right? The front, the back, the two sleeves. So it was a little boring that way, but overall I think it turned out the best. I absolutely love it. It's the, my, it's my favorite thing that I crocheted. Yeah. Next Next up, I made this sweater here. Now, this one here, you might be thinking, those aren't your colors. Those aren't like your color scheme. They're not, you know, I like more on the warmer side. This I actually made technically with my Oma because she made a lot of these squares. She made a lot of the white ones, all the green ones, all the gray ones. There's a few light blue ones that she made as well. And they were just been sitting in this yarn bucket that I've had since I think I started crocheting back in like 2008, 2009. So it's been a really long time. Just didn't know what to do with them. And then I'm like, you know what? Let's just make a cardigan. Now this cardigan is really oversized and it's because of the squares that she initially started to make. If she would have made them a little bit smaller, it would have been a little bit more manageable, but because she started it, I had to finish it. What I did is I actually made all of these blue squares, which I think this color is very beautiful. And then I made a bunch of the white ones too. I tried my best to match them. This square here was made by my Oma and then this square was made by myself. So I did my best to color match it pretty, pretty good. But yeah, yeah, it's a little oversized, but I think it's really cool. My Oma did pass away in 2020. She was almost 100 years old. She was 99 years old. I finally did it and I made this really pretty cardigan. It's really pretty. It's really warm. It's really cozy. It's just, I kind of forget that I have the things I crochet and I just wear other things and I need, I need to start wearing these because this is just so cute and I just love it so much. This 10 out of 10. What am I going to say? It's of course it's going to be 10 out of 10. We're getting into the Halloween stuff now. So now we're in October and I made this cute little ghost bag. I made this with Hobie yarn. It was like kind feather yarn and I was really surprised how fast it worked out. Here's the problem with buying Hobie yarn. You can't see it in person. You just have to hope for the best that you're buying the right size and when it comes in it's either going to be too small or too thick and I've only gotten it as too small not realizing. But anyways I made this bag here and I did it a little tapestry. This one is on my Patreon if you are interested in this pattern. There's like little googly eyes that I put in it's front and back and here's the thing when I was making this I almost decided to make it into a vest but I was already too far it was already too small for myself and if I would have known that this yarn would have taken me as far as it did probably would have made it into a vest but I wasn't too sure I wasn't too sure how much yarn I was gonna need and I actually have leftover yarn so I could have done it and then the inside again I did it reversible have these little bats and cats and they're like the same color it's that green and that purple and I bought this fabric at Fabricland and I bought it after I bought the yarn it's not like I bought the fabric and then I picked out the yarn to match I bought it after isn't that neat how it just matches also the handles as you can see I did them in reverse colors now at Fabricland they didn't have a green or purple that matched so I just you know just got the generic green and purple this bag I give a 10 out of 10 it's it's cute, I like it, it's the perfect size, and it turned out pretty good if you ask me. So the next project I made for Halloween was this one here. This is a really cute little haunted house. It has a ghost, it has the moon. The moon gave me troubles. If you watch the video, you know how much I struggled with this moon, trying to get it round. And I think I got it good up here, but like down here, I was already too far. I'm like, I'm not taking it apart. It's fine. I have trouble with these collars. I love these collars, but I'm just having so much trouble with them. Now, Nothing on the back and that's just the front. It is this purple color. What I am disappointed is that I wish this green could glow in the dark. The only yarn that I have found, also I found it after I had made this, that glows in the dark is like a very thin cotton, whereas this is um, a medium acrylic yarn. So the two just wouldn't have worked. I mean, unless I would have like doubled it up, but the glow in the dark yarn that I have now after this is also white. It wouldn't have worked because then this would have just looked white and the only time it would have glowed in the dark is if I was in the dark, and that rarely happens. I'm really glad I did do this green. Now my sister, I don't know what happened to it. She did give me a glow-in-the-dark paint and a fabric medium. In the future, I could technically make a glow-in-the-dark 
if I want to. I gotta test it first. This one here, I probably give a nine out of 10. A little trouble with the collar, a little trouble with the moon. Also, I didn't wear it and I feel so bad that I didn't wear it. Beginning of October, the crewnecks. I got really into them and that's all I wanted to wear. Also just saying like these like crochet projects, they're very heavy. And I think the problem is, is now that it's coat season and you know I love thrifting a good coat, a good jacket. In order for me to go thrifting, I can't be wearing anything bulky because I can't try it on over my clothes because it's just, it's not going to fit right. And I think that's the problem. But I've had this idea for well over a year. I am disappointed that I wasn't able to wear it in October. It is what it is. And uh, maybe, maybe next year. The last project that I did for October was uh, this. It is a Demma Gorgon headpiece. I gotta put it on properly. There's a bunch of spikes everywhere. Oh goodness. Okay, so what it looks like, there's these spikes everywhere because I put metal rods in to like try to give it the flowers a little bit of shape, but I didn't really, you know, tape the ends off or did anything. I just kind of left it. I think that this turned out really cool. It was literally a last minute project. Like I wasn't planning on making a Halloween costume this year just because I was working on so many other projects. I'm trying to get it straight and it just, I think it's because the way it's, it's, uh, the headband, the headband straight, but everything else isn't. So this is good to get right now. And then what I did is I got a sweater, it's somewhere, and I made some like clips and stuff on that so I could just clip it to the sweater. And then I had like a face mask too, but I crocheted the front, I crocheted the back, and then I uh, glued all these spikes with a, a thick type of... I keep wanting to say foam and it's not foam, felt. So it's a thicker felt that I just cut up because I was not gonna crochet a bunch of teeth, okay? That just wasn't happening. See, look at this spike. This spike is like gonna go right into my eye. Gosh darn it, that's, it's, this is dangerous to wear. I need to fix it. But it's not like an everyday look, okay? It was for Halloween and there we go. This, I give a 10 out of 10 because it is so creative. It's so fun. It does need a little bit of fixing. But other than that, I think this is a really fun Halloween costume. All right, we're on to November now. Uh, what did I make? So first off, this. Uh, first off, I made this here. I bought this pattern from Dorothy Jean Crochet and sometimes like just following a pattern is so nice. You don't have to think about it. You just read and you go and that's it. I don't know if I wore it out just because there's a few technical issues on my part, on my part. It's because I have to block it still and I haven't done that because I did make it a little bit wide and when I was making it, I was really debating if I should have done one peak or two peaks. I ended up doing two peaks, probably could have done one and a half. One, not gonna, wouldn't have worked, but one and a half probably would. And the problem is, is when I wear it, it wants to like flare out to the sides. And I think it's just because I didn't do any ribbing on the bottom. And usually I do do ribbing on the bottom, but because I loved how like the edges are like that, I just didn't want to but because of that it, it just wants to do whatever it wants to do and it doesn't want to cinch in I think I have to like play around with that and probably block it I should block it but I give this a 10 out of 10 I love the colors I picked like these are my colors I'm really happy with how it turned out I just need to make those little bit of adjustments and then I'll start wearing it but overall it was a really fun project to work on and I really liked how it turned out I just need to make those changes up next is the mom sweater from Animal Crossings I made this and I absolutely love it now this was my first birthday crochet project that I was gonna wear for my birthday and then I realized I'm going thrifting. I'm gonna be trying on coats. I can't wear it. This one threw me through a loop a little bit. There was some problems that I had. The original one on Animal Crossings, here's a photo, uh, is three by three and that wouldn't have worked for me because I'm not an Animal Crossing character. I made it four by three. I could have made another row at the bottom but I decided no. Usually when I make a project like this with a bunch of granny squares, I'll just make the granny squares and attach them all together. But because this was a little small, I had to make some some more rows of single crochets on the shoulders and I had to put more single crochets on the bottom before I added the ribbing and I even had to put it on the sides as well. That was a lifesaver. Otherwise it would have been way too small. And I think it looks a lot better like this. I feel like if I were to have made it and the squares would have been touching, I don't know. I don't think it would have had the right vibe to it, but I really like how I added those extra rows on the top. I think that looks really, really cute. This fits me like a glove. It fits me perfectly. The only issue that I have, and I did not mention this in my original video because I was unaware of it in the original video. So in the original video, when you saw me try it on, that was the first time I put it on, okay? I thought it was great. Once I shut the camera off and I tried to take it off, my head would not fit through this neck hole. I had to force it off my head because I didn't realize that when I made this little neckline, which I did differently than most times, is that I actually made the piece separate and I attached 
attached it and I love, I love that weight. I'm probably gonna continue doing it. But when I was measuring it, I was measuring it around my neck, not the top of my head that my head is gonna have to go through with the neck hole, okay? When I put it on, it was a little bit of a struggle, but it's fine, it's fine. But taking it off, a whole other ball game and it was not great so i haven't worn it because i need to fix it sure it fits fine when i wear it but when i try to take it off i have a little bit of issues so i'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10 because i need to fix this neck opening because it's it's not working for me but otherwise i think this was really cute it turned out exactly how i thought it was gonna turn out and it fits really nice we're on to the last thing of this video i made some collars i gotta say i made them too big so this is the first one it's way too big i should have made it smaller but again i was just kind of looking off of pinterest photos and i'm like okay well they have one two three four like five rows i'll also do that it's a little too big so this one's a little bit too big I, lo I love it. I love how it looks like candy. It's cute. It's adorable. I love it. Not the right fit. And then I ended up making this one thinking that this one was going to be like the clear winner. But this one also is a little bit too big. And then the last one that I had made for myself was this one here. And this one's actually going to go with the Christmas project that I'm working on. But this one here is also a little bit too big. Now, here's the funny thing. I made one for my cat Totoro. I don't know if you've watched that video, but I made one for my cat Totoro. Okay, this is the one that I made for my cat and guess what it fits me the best out of all of them the one that I made for my cat fits me I'm gonna take it from her and I'm gonna wear it cuz I'm gonna wear it more than she does okay I, I feel like she doesn't even realize that it exists anymore I put it on her one time took it off and she probably forgot about it this one fits me the best and it was made for a cat it's super cute I really like it and they were really easy to do so I would like to make more but uh, I got other things to do right now oh also if you're just wondering about this guy my sister made him for me so I didn't make it but my sister made him for me she called him Seymour so his name is Seymour she made him for me for my birthday you can definitely check her out here she has her own little Instagram where she posts her own crochet projects. He sits there now. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, I feel like I probably made a few little small projects here and there that I've just forgotten. Nothing big, like probably some cup cozies. That's pretty much it. That's all I can think about. That pretty much does it. I crocheted a lot and like looking at everything that I crocheted, my next video when I have to do like everything I crocheted in 2023, that video is going to be long because there's a lot of stuff I got to go through. Anywho, that does it for this video. If you're new to my channel, like sewing, thrifting, crafting and of course crocheting why not hit the subscribe button you can follow me on my instagram and my tiktok and my patreon now i think that's it so y'all have a good day now